What's up? Welcome, 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 welcome to yet another episode of A Beer News. My name is Andrew. I'm one of the people behind the Beer Guide. And today I deliver the Beer News every Thursday live on Instagram and YouTube. New beers, industry happenings, a couple events, things that excite me. I'm not talking about trivia and I don't know. I'm not excited about trivia, I guess. Although there is a 90s hip hop trivia at Paul that I actually kind of excited about. Anywho, can't do the beer news without a beer. I thought I had more time today. So I was going to go to the depot, not the depot. Uh, the liquor store and grab something new and fresh. I didn't have time. So I think I drank this last week on Beer News. It's a great beer, uh, but I need to restock my fridge because uh, I'm not doubting putting down this beer at all because this one's fresh too. I think this was canned a month ago. March 4th, right? It's April 11th, so five weeks ago. Like this is drinking. Yummy fresh. Anyway. Let's get to beer news. How you doing? Go get a beer if you haven't had one already. Uh, what's up, nerds? Nerdettes? Nerdarinos? <laughs> All right, we'll start off with Edmonton news, and we'll get into uh, Calgary. And then I don't really have too much for the rest of Alberta. Edmonton, Calgary is where it's popping. So two minutes after the hour, uh, big news in Edmonton. Ale Architect is having their first birthday this weekend. And they're basically having a Yum Yum Festival. If you know Yum Yum, Yum Yum Juice is their tart pale ale. Uh, very popular. They're doing a bunch of versions of it. They'll have Yum Yum Orange, which is uh, Yum Yum Juice fermented on oranges. They'll have a peaches version. They'll also have a mango, peach, and carrot version. And then that version is going to be served two ways, regular and on nitro. So you could do a Yum Yum flight. It's insane. Anyway, <laughs> happy birthday, Al Architect. Uh, on Friday, April 12th, uh, Coast Food Truck will be on site from 4 to 8 p.m. And on Saturday, April 13th, a cask of yum yum juice with orange and raspberry will be tapped at noon. So, assuming they don't run out of any of those first four yum yums versions, you could have five yum yums on Saturday. Yum! Ridiculous. Anyway, they'll have 18 beer on tap this weekend, and plus the usual Birch and Bear pizza available the whole time. Uh, Alley Cat, I don't even talk about pouring a beer you didn't even. Don't even do it. Cheers. <sighs> Yum. Uh, Alley Cat is having their 29th birthday this year. They haven't actually announced what day they're celebrating their birthday, but they keep alluding to it's their birthday month. So I think they're just doing a bunch of different things. But they did bring back Full Moon. And if you remember Full Moon, that is a their classic pale ale. It's a West Coast style of pale ale, directly inspired by Sierra Nevada's pale ale, which when Alley Cat got started in 1995, 29 years ago, 95, great vintage, great year. Um... <laughs> That was a revolutionary beer. There was there wasn't very many other people in North America making a style of beer like a hop forward pale ale. So uh, it's neat to see them bring it back. They also brought back the vintage original label for the Alley Cat Pale Ale. Um, it's a bunch of like drunk cats at the bar, and it's amazing, like hand drawn. And I was going through my labels archive, and I have a bunch of those original labels unused. Uh, as well. So I'm going to do a, I'm pretty dirty about this stuff. I like it. I'm going to do a big post about, I don't know, I discovered something in these labels, which is pretty fascinating. So full moon back on draft. I got to go get some. I missed that beer. Uh, also Gemini Dragon is their double IPA series. Uh, well, Dragon is their double, IC, double IPA series. That one's coming out on April 18th. Plus on April 8th, or pardon me, April 20th, 420. Where you drink out of straws, right? Uh, the music of Mario Kart is happening at the Alley Cat Brewery in the evening, so go buy tickets for that. They're gonna have you can play Mario Kart while musicians play the music of Mario Kart. I don't know which Mario Kart if they're going OG or Super or 64 or everything after that. I don't know, maybe it's a mix. 
time will tell. Uh, Arcadia uh, adopted their Time for Kindness launch. Now all the money is going towards the community. So go drink beers and help people. Uh, Bent Stick, it's funny, we're talking about Alley Cat, and I messaged uh, Cole from Bent Stick. I was like, Alley Cat's 29, that's amazing. And I was like, what, what is the second oldest brewery in Edmonton? Does anyone know? I looked it up on my little spreadsheet. Technically, it's Brewster's in the Unity Square, but they haven't been brewing in that space. So they're not a brewery. It's a restaurant right now. They're not a brewery. They've been brewing since 2019. So five years. Oh, almost five years. Um, so if you consider a brewery that is still brewing beer or that opened and is still open, Bent Stick is the second oldest brewery in Edmonton. Wild. Uh, Yellowhead is not, they haven't brewed beer since 2019. In fact, I think the beer in their tanks, now technically they're not closed, but they're definitely not open. They laid off all their staff at the, as the pandemic hit in March of 2019, and then, sorry, March of 2020, and then nothing happened. I'm pretty sure the beer that was brewed in those tanks is still in those tanks. Uh, if they reopen, then they'll have the title, I guess. But I mean, if you close for four years, Five years almost? Four years, sorry? 2020 is when they laid everyone off. Anywho, back to Ben Stick. It's an interesting combo. I, these things intrigue me. Uh, ben Stick brought back Art Teacher's Office, which is a dank IPA, just in time for 420. Uh, the flavor is like a pineapple that was dragged through a pine forest, but in a good way. And the aroma kind of smells like the Art Teacher's Office. <laughs> so don't worry, there's no weed in it, but... I don't know, smoke some weed and take an edible and drink the beer. Do whatever you want. Uh, shout out to the Cannabis Sommelier uh, for helping them select the right dosage of Bubba Terps. If you don't know the Cannabis Sommelier, a.k.a. Weed Andy, a.k.a. Andrew Friedman, uh, he's written a book on terpenes, and he owns uh, Cannabis Tolling Solutions uh, in West Edmonton. Uh, they take weed products and refine them into oils. I'll repost this. If you're a nerd about marijuana... He's the guy. And Ben Stick is now open seven days a week. Yes. Uh, Blind Enthusiasm brought back Lager O Darkness. Easy drinking, roasty. Uh, Irrational has a brand new beer. Irrational has a brand new beer. They haven't announced it yet, but it is on their website. It is, and it is on tap. It's called Cairn, which is a double dry hopped modern West Coast IPA at 6.5%. It's been described as Clementine Kush and Forest Wildberry. So again, 420 is on the horizon. Go drink a teacher's office in a modern West Coast. Uh, Long Roof has two new beer they launched last week. The first is a table beer at 3.7% called Microdose. It's a Norwegian table beer. And the second is a New England IPA at 6.8% called La Hazy River. I like that. Uh, also, their patio is open, which great, great patio. Polyrhythm has a new beer launching Friday, April 12th, and it is grunge music themed. All their beers are music themed. This one's grungy. I'm sure it's delicious. Uh, sea Change is hiring a seller hand. Experience would be preferred, but they are willing to train for the right aptitude and education. Um, you'd get to work with Daniel Wood, who's an absolute machine. He is stellar. He worked at Alley Cat, and then he went to Sea Change when they expanded to open their production facility at Shitties, which should be open soon, the spring, soon. Um, and Daniel Wood quickly moved up to be a head brewer. And you learn from him. So if you want to take your career seriously, the way like a lot of people who own breweries now or work at breweries, they got their start at Alley Cat back in the day. Um, sea Change is now kind of taking on that role. They're big and they're producing a lot of things. And, and you know, when we'll move up in the game, could be a good fit for you. Uh, Slow Pour, your favorite European-themed beer bar, just outside the brewery district, uh, has a couple events coming up. 
Next week, Friday, April 19th, they have 3F Friday, which is uh, Drink Lamic, Drink Spontaneous Beer. And then their Kolsch night is moving to a Wednesday, the last Wednesday of the month, on April the 24th. Which, if you haven't been, Kolsch night is great. Uh, SYC finally made a post about a new beer or a beer bringing back. They just kind of post. I don't know. I want to know. I don't want to know what's going on. Just, just let me know when the new beers come out. Anyway, Triangulum is a New England IPA that just came back. Limited amounts. I know I love Kolsch. More more, it's good Kolsch. Uh, what's your distribution like in Edmonton? I feel like it's, I feel like it's decent. You know, I gotta get my hands on some. Uh, SYC brought back Triangulum. It's a trifecta of hops, Citra, Galaxy, Talus. It's a good notes of pineapple, stone fruit, and slight resinous, sappy finish. It's so funny how the whole world went super west coast in like the early 2000s, the 20-teens. Bitter, piney, and then everything switched. Whew, New England, juicy, fruity, hot flavors with no bitterness. And now it's kind of somewhere in between. People want tropical fruits, but they want it balanced with like sappy or resinous or orange or grapefruit. It's interesting. Uh, trial and ale there, lower tap room. They're building a patio, so hopefully that construction goes quickly. I don't know how much work they're putting into it, but it will more than double their capacity is what I'm told. And they have a new pizza menu uh, called Pizzetta, which is a 12-inch hand-stretched personal pie. Uh, before their New York's like 24 inches, and you're like, uh, I'm just one person, and I don't eat pizza for seven days. I mean, I'd eat that pizza for seven days. But if you're on a lunch date and you're trying not to impress someone with how much pizza you can eat, uh, they got 12-inch. They look great. They look so good. There's actually one that intrigues me that's a marinara anchovy. No cheese, just marinara, like their sauce and anchovies. I've never actually had anchovies on a pizza. It sounds good, though. Beer Rev, Cask Night, Fridays at 5. And that's it for Edmonton News. Let's go over to Calgary News at 13 minutes after the hour. A couple things happening. Annex is hiring a full-time brewer and part-time servers. Go all the way over to Big Rock. They said they had this announcement coming, and then they did some joke for April Fools, and everyone's like, boo. And then they waited a few weeks and then announced that Big Sky Barbecue is now at Big Rock starting May 1st. Uh, they're based out of Okotoks, and it's not just like they're bringing in the meat. They're slinging wings, ribs, brisket, you name it. It's all fresh and smoked on site. And Big Rock would be the place to have it if you've been to their brewery and been to their site. It's a campus. And they have like three or four buildings in their southeast location. So there's a courtyard and big statues and lots of room to actually do smoking. So I'm actually pretty excited about that because a lot of barbecue places, you know, they're just using a smoker in, the, like, a commercial smoker in the kitchen. It's not the same. What's up, Pims? Drinking beers? I had a hula punch earlier today on an unrelated note. Um, and I wish I would have stashed that can and drank hula punch because I did drink a wolf last week on the show. But here we are. Uh, Born Brewing turns six at the end of the month. Just block your calendar. A bunch of things going on April 25th, 26th, 27th. Uh, Bottle Screw Bills, have you been? I know they're a pub for the longest time, but way, way, way back in the day, if you look up their original liquor producing license, it was issued in, like, 1984. I wonder if they were originally older than Big Rock. We can find out, you know. I have the technology. Anywho, uh, Bottle Screw Bills is oh my god my auto provider switch my uh, whew, bottle screw bills just got cans so they're gonna be canning their beers so you can buy it to go and ideally probably in liquor stores in the near future now talking about bottle screw bills has anyone been because they put out a couple beers that look really good like a pub ale and then sometimes they put out a beer that looks maybe not as eye-catching, like a blonde or something. Um, anyone? 
Bueller, Bueller. So check this out. I'm just buzzards, which is bottle screw bills, like buzzards is the restaurant side. Uh, their original liquor license is from 1983 because they were a brewery way back in the day and then it stopped for, I don't know, 15 years, 20 years or something like that. Whereas Big Rock uh, originally got their license. Oh, their new location says 87, but they were founded in 84. Interesting. Anyway, I like these beer history things. Maybe I'm working on a project related to such a thing. William Moore says, beers are solid. Ian knows his stuff. Awesome prices, too. Awesome. Good to know. Appreciate that. I got to get there. Uh, more Calgary news. I mean, I've been to Bottle School Bills. I just haven't been there since they've been brewing. So uh, I'm overdue. Uh, Cabin Brewing has a new beer called Giga Saturation, which is a lot of saturation. <laughs> It's an Imperial IPA at 9.1%. Uh, features a ludicrous amount of Nectaron, American Noble, Mosaic, Citra, and Eldorado hops, all crossing beams to create the mother of all tropical flavor blast waves. Sounds great. <laughs> you know it's going to be great. A perfectly saturated haze bomb. So that is available now. Go get some. Oh, good day. Uh, Citizen Brewing has a new beer called Cittadino. I had to look up the pronunciation. Now I'm just saying, trying to say things in Italian. Uh, it's an Italian Pilsner, 5.2%. They use imported European malt and hops, old world backbreaking brewing techniques. Does that mean they're just like stirring it <laughs> by hand? Uh, double dry hopping of noble hops, Hallertau, Middlefru, and Tetnanger. What does that mean? It imparts herbal and floral notes to the most popular beer style in the world, which is Pilsner. Uh, this is an Italian Pilsner. We make great barley and malt in Alberta. We've got a little bit of hops here, but great hops from BC and the Northwest US. But there's something about European malt and hops in the old world. They're just yum. Oh, also Citizen does a weekend food feature, and it's ramen. It's a miso pork broth ramen this weekend. Looks great. Uh, Cold Garden, they are doing their Crafty Mondays, and April 15th is apron painting. Yeah, why not? I don't know. I started baking. I made pita bread the other day. I should get a little, get a little apron, you know, paint my face on it. Whew, what else we got? 88. Uh, oh, new beer, Dream House, Small Hazy. Full-bodied, velvety, creamy mouthfeel, boasts lots of mango, passion fruit, pineapple flavor with a nice bitter finish. It's the first recipe from their off-packer turned cellar person, Zoe. And uh, with that, uh, proceeds of the beer will head to the Women's Center, Women's Center of Calgary for supporting their community work. Drink good beer, do good things. Still that from right Establishment has a new beer called Rare Heart. 2024 is a barrel aged beer with strawberries picture in your mouth's eye lemon zested strawberry jam on a bed of fresh cut greens it comes out the garden gate sweet but chases swiftly with a firm acidity and a lemony finish that lingers it's one of their big bottled barrel aged beers it'll be good you know it'll be good go get some and isn't it like strawberry season now? Is that the first? Maybe not in Alberta yet. In like England, there was like this big thing back in the day. Uh, the producers who could get strawberries first and then bring them into the cities, they made a lot of money. It's, Ooh, strawberry season! Added with a dollop of heavy clotted cream. Uh, Meta, this is interesting. Meta Brewing is interesting because their brand is... I don't know. I don't think it's very unique. <laughs> My perspective. They make good beers. They have interesting labels, but I feel like there's no personality behind it. Um, so they have good beers for the craft market, and they also have their kinetic lager, which is like, you know, competing discount, you know, 15 pack, 12 pack, short cans lager. And then they put out Black Buck, which looks eerily similar to Blue Buck out of from Phillips, but it's Black Buck. 
head-on kind of deer with the antlers. But it's their premium strong lager, 6.7% in small cans, 12 ounces. It would surprise me if this was above $30. You know, uh, I feel like they're just hitting that. There's a there's a market that really bad brewers like Minhas have a stronghold of. And I feel like they're just trying to get a piece of the pie. Nothing wrong with that. I just It's interesting that they would have kind of put that on their page next to all their craft beers. I don't know. What do you think? If one of your favorite brands, like let's say Analog or a Sea Change or a Blind Man, all of a sudden put out a, a discount beer at Strong Cans, 6.5% lager, what would you think? Who knows? Get the money or like, eh, maybe don't target that market. Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, I thought that was fascinating. I'm actually curious to try it because I've never had a discount strong lager that's been tasty. I feel like those, what's the Venn diagram? <laughs> it's just two circles. They're not intersecting at all. There's no tasty, strong, and cheap <laughs> lager. Uh, sad news, OT Brewing, their last day of being opened was Sunday. So their tap room is closed. Now, they did say that they were going to do something else. It's not the end. They're still brewing their beer, and it's still going to be on shelves and available. Um, based on my history of seeing a brewery close the tap room, they typically don't reopen. Unless it's already been like, hey, we're closing our tap room because we're moving somewhere else, a better location. Uh, Bent Stick did that. And Dandy did that. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. I hope OT finds another spot and can open another tap room. I truly do. Uh, Prairie Dog Brewing. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. I said this last week. Paint a Gnome Night, April 23rd. Go get a ticket. Just, there you go. Uh, Tail Gunner. Maybe, maybe this means more to me than you. I don't know. The brewers from Tail Gunner are currently in Chechia, or as more commonly known, the Czech Republic. They just toured Pilsner Urkel. They were at Luker. Pilsner Urkel is where the style of Pilsner was invented. Um, the owners of Slowpour spent time at Pilsner Urkel, and they learned how to properly pour um, on the Lucre side pole European faucet. If you want a beer, a Pilsner or a Kel, like Chechia, Czech Republic, you go to Slopoir. Now that Tail Gunner's there, and they're all homies too. Now that Tail Gunner's there, I imagine their Pilsner looks already great. will get even better, and the pores in the tap room will get even better. That's just me speculating. Can't get worse. <laughs> uh, Two House has a new beer, half of Eisen. That's all he said. Uh, Two Pillars. Two Pillars has a new beer. Vanilla Triple, 8.3%. Let's get this spring going. Triple Day Delight, Bubbles, Vanilla, Unite, Twisted Combo. Right. And uh, Zero Wish, you mentioned their patio is open. I think everyone's patio is open now. Like I said, Laura Trial now, they're building theirs. Um, some people just have to wait for the city. It's weird in different cities, but hey, if you can, open your goddamn patio. Uh, oh, and then if you need to go for dinner tomorrow night, why not buy a ticket to Old's College Brewmaster Dinner in Old's, Alberta, Friday, April 12th, 5 p.m., five-course dinner, dance, silent auction. Damn, I want to go. I've been before. It's great. Anyway, that's it for the beer news. I hope you learned something. Um, or you have plans now. I got to go drink that beer. Got to go buy that beer. Got to go here. Got to go there. Pardon me. Uh, Instagram, YouTube, live every Thursdays at 4 o'clock. This will be posted so you can rewatch them. The text, if you want to read my script, skip all this next time, uh, will be in the description of the YouTube video. That is it. I'll catch you next Thursday. Ta-ta. YouTube.